Life Hacks, a Dvar Torah for Parashat Yitro. Are you familiar with the videos that offer five life hacks to help you keep your closet organized or save time in the kitchen or organize your life in general? Israelis are great with this kind of thinking. Like the story about how the IDF saves water by putting an empty bottle into the toilet tank, stopping it from filling up every time the water is flushed. What do these videos have to do with this week's parsha? It depends on who you ask. There are two main stories in our parasha. The first is Yitro's arrival to Machane Yisrael, where among other things he suggests to Moshe to inaugurate ministers of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, so he doesn't collapse under the burden of the leadership. The second is Mahamad al-Sinai, where the Israelites receive the Torah. Or maybe not. That is, there's no question that both stories take place in our parasha. What's not clear is which story comes first and which comes second. The Tanaim, Rabbi Yoshua and Rabbi Elazar Amodai disagree regarding the order. Rabbi Yoshua claims that Yitro heard about the Amalek war that preceded the story, and then he came to Har Sinai, and Rabbi Elazar Amodai claims that he heard about Matan Torah, even though the story appears later on in the verses. This debate can have many consequences, practical, theological, and historical, and the reasons that lead to it are also interesting. But I was mainly interested in one question, which I hope will become more evident as you read, and hopefully will resolve the question of the connection between these two stories as well, regardless of their order of appearance. For those who read the Torah for the first time and have no background, it's not clear why the Israelites received the Torah in the first place. Let me explain. When the children of Israel leave Egypt, they receive a promise that they will be saved from the Egyptian tyranny, that they will inherit the land of the seven nations, and even that they will be God's people and he will be their God. What they are not told is that they're going to receive the Torah. Why then did they receive the Torah? There's no shortage of theories from those who claim that this is the purpose of the creation of the world, there was no other possibility, to those who claim that it is due to a lack of choice as a type of emergency surgery. Whatever it is, if anyone understand what I just wrote here, please explain it to me so I too understand it. All I'm trying to do is show that there were different options. I'd like to suggest something else. I'll begin with some caveats. First, my interpretation is my own, no one else is to blame. Second, it's not intended to cause anyone to take any action. Third, my writing is written as if the story in the Torah took place in the order of the writing. To the other opinion, we'll have to adapt the words a little bit, but deal with it. Fourth, I'm done apologizing. From what's written in the Torah, it's clear that Yitro's offer is based on a practical necessity. He recognizes that Moshe works from morning to evening and that without an alternative strategy, Moshe will collapse. I want to offer you a tip, Yitro says. You don't have to accept it, but if you don't delegate, you and the people will surely collapse. Moshe accepts Yitro's offer, appoints ministers, and the rest is history. Considering that right after Yitro's story, the revelation of Mount Sinai appears, I don't think it would be unreasonable to suggest that this story came to solve the same problem. Like Yitro, God wants to help prevent Moshe's collapse. The difference is the nature of the tip. First, if refusing Yitro's proposal was an option, refusing Hashem's advice was not. Chazal teach that God held the mountain above them saying that if they refuse, he will bury them alive. But also the content of the hack is different. The way Yitro solved the problem was by delegating authority and creating sub-leaders to take Moshe's place. God gives the Torah to the Israelites, giving it to each individual as his own responsibility. I can't prove what I'm saying 100% from reading the verses. The people are restricted from going up the mountain. The people should be warned against, against touching the mountain. There is a hierarchy between Moshe, Aharon, the priest, and the people. On the other hand, when Moshe says that the people will not be able to go up, God tells him, okay, you go down, then come up. God commands Moshe to speak to Beit Yaakov and Bnei Yisrael, then again to speak to the Israelites. When Moshe says these things to the elders, Lazkenim, all the people answer him. So it's the people. The people are sanctified. The people should be ready for the third day. Compared to the passivity of the people in Yitro's story, preceding Matan Torah, they're extremely active and responsible. 
Am I trying to claim that Yito's advice or Mahmad Har Sinai could have been replaced by a clickbait video? Of course not. That statement in itself is clickbait. On the other hand, I do think that there are two stories here, and they can illuminate the innovation of the startup nation as something deeply rooted in our DNA. And that brings me to my concluding question. I have also tried to reinvent myself a bit and use an artificial intelligence, mid-journey for those familiar with it, to generate new images for last week's video. An example is this image. What do you think? Should I stay conservative with the usual images or renew? I'm looking forward to your response. I am Dovi Holtz, one who loves Tanakh.